So, good morning. Uh, that's all of Dutch I know. <laughs> anyway, thanks for attending this morning. Uh, I'm Greg Dumas, Vice President of International Sales and Marketing for Zingati. Uh, as you can tell, we're a U.S.-based company based out of uh, the heart of Silicon Valley there in San Jose. So we're going to talk a little bit about virtualization uh, infrastructure and performance management. And how many people here are actually virtual administrators? Who has the, okay. So, okay, so, so does this seem familiar? Every time it's a problem, it's your fault? Because we all know when it was all physical networks, you never had problems, right? It was perfect, that's right. You just spent another million euros on more Cisco stuff and it got better and better. Everyone went fishing for, for weeks, right? So we're gonna talk a little bit about where management for virtual infrastructures are today and some of the issues involved with making sure that you can be proactive and see issues before these people start pointing the fingers in staff meetings, okay? So, a few questions, and I want you to read this chart. Does this look familiar? You know, how much do outages actually cost you in downtime? What are your operating costs to support problems in the virtual infrastructure? Also, what about the intangible costs, like your reputation, all right? Every time there's a problem, they keep blaming the virtual infrastructure and the virtual administrator. It doesn't make you look very good. How do you prove when problems are occurring and what is making the problem happen? There's a lot of management tools out there that actually give you a red icon to let you know that there was an issue, but they're telling you something that happened maybe an hour ago. So it's almost like the fire department calling you up and saying, hey, your house burnt down. Sorry, you know, we put water on it, but it's still smoke. You would rather have the fire alarm go off so you have a chance of saving your house instead of letting it burn down. Same thing when you have problems in the infrastructure. The other thing is, how can you consolidate all these tools? You've got tools for storage, you've got tools for applications, tools for physical networks. Wouldn't it be nice to actually aggregate those so you really truly have one pane of glass, all right? Nice concept, right? Also, what allows you to properly size your virtual desktop implementation? I can't tell you how many times we've actually been to a customer site and they didn't order up enough CPU memory disk bandwidth and then they had to go back to the financial officer and say, um, I was about a half million euros short. Oops, congratulations, you just found yourself new work because you should have let me know this before we put the budget together. And then last but not least, wouldn't it be great to see problems before your users do? Wouldn't it be nice to actually have a recording where you could send it to an email and say, hey, Hank, um, I just saw something very interesting here. And you end up finding out that Hank is basically he has an antivirus scan running at 2 in the afternoon when it should be running at 2 in the morning. Or maybe Hank's downloading Netflix using the company support server using BitTorrent. Or maybe Hank's looking at the World Cup finals on YouTube in the middle of the day. These are all examples of things that we help our customers find out. So instead of guessing and having to look at logs and point fingers at each other, you want to have a way that you can actually get root cause analysis immediately. All right? And then you can kind of sit back and life's a lot easier. So the thing that we like to say is are you proactive or you're reactive in taking care of your customer support issues? Because if you're not, it's broken. Your environment's broken. All right, you're only seeing part of the problem, part of the time. And when you get called into management to say, why is my desktop slow? How come the guy in Utrecht can't get his data quick enough? Get this junk out of here, all right? It's always your fault. Of course it's your fault, because you're the virtualization guy. So, some more challenges, and just 
like you to look at that chart and see if any of these issues are, are relevant to your environment. Seeing some guys nodding their heads, yeah. These are the issues that you constantly have, particularly for virtual desktops. Right, how do you properly plan? How do you actually let people know that they're ready for VDI? How can you actually convince the application owners to give up their servers? <laughs> That's always a bit of a, a, a fight. You know, how can I actually see physical and virtual? All right, physical networks. We find typically 30 to 40 percent of most virtual desktop issues are because there's a performance problem in the physical network. Maybe F5 switches aren't load balanced properly, so you've got 80 percent of your traffic going to four VM hosts instead of 20 VM hosts. All right. I actually know one customer in London spent over a million pounds in storage optimization software because they were convinced that was going to fix their latency issue. They put it in, guess what? Nothing changed except for the fact that the guy that ordered that got fired. Oops, not so good. All right. It ended up that their F5 switches were misconfigured so they weren't load balanced properly. So they had too much traffic going to too few hosts. These are the things that happen every day, and everyone's pointing the finger at each other. So how do I fix this problem? Well, this is typically what you see on most tools that are out there. They're really tools that were meant for what we call server metrics. All right, server metrics being long-term resource planning, capacity planning. They do a very nice job of helping you figure out what you need to do in the future. However, they don't do a very good job of telling you what's happening right now. And typically, you're going to see reports that are very static. All right? They change maybe every 10, 15, 20 minutes. All right? And a lot of red light, green light stuff. And very much infrastructure centric. They're really meant for the, the, the host environment. Don't do a very good job of going and drilling down to the actual desktop itself. Your problem is when you get a call from the guy who's, let's say, up in Groningen, okay, and he's really mad. Is he going to make you get in your car and the train to go up there to see what's going on? No, you want to be able to drill down from your desk in Amsterdam to see what's happening to that guy without having to getting a train or having to send someone out with a sniffer. Most tools that are virtualization monitoring and management don't do that for you. They give you a lot of historical information, a lot of what we call stale data. They basically tell you what happened an hour ago, but they don't give you root cause analysis. And when you're dealing with desktop virtualization, root cause analysis is critical, particularly in areas like healthcare or banking and finance. The last thing a trader wants to hear is, well, I, I think it's physical network. That's why you couldn't execute that half a million dollar trade. They don't want to hear that. They want to know what's going on in their environment now. So you really need to look at what your tool set is. I mean, we've had some nice meetings this morning. People said, I, I, I really don't have any visibility. I really don't know what's happening at the endpoint. And that's the difference of going from this environment to what we like to call real-time root cause analysis, OK? So within virtualization, I like to use the analysis that there is no one tool that fixes everything. All right, if management says, I want you to go out and find the perfect tool that's going to do everything, let me know, because I want, I want to sell for that company. We haven't found that yet. And when you are in virtualization, it's very much like sitting down to the dinner table. You have a knife, you have a fork, and you have a spoon. Now, how many people here have tried cutting a piece of steak with a spoon? Anyone? Maybe you're camping, right? Yeah, you're up in the Alps, and you have nothing else, and you have your spoon like the Army guy, right? Well, it doesn't work really good with steak, but you're not going to get steak in the Alps anyway. It's going to be probably some kind of mush or something, but it doesn't work. Have you ever tried eating soup with a fork? You know, maybe good if there's a lot of noodles in it, but otherwise it kind of falls through. 
All right? I like to say virtualization is very much like a knife, fork, and a spoon. Each one has a different function, all right? You need all three to have a proper dining experience, but you're certainly not going to go ahead and, uh, you know, pick up spaghetti with a knife and try to eat soup with a fork, all right? So, agent-based tools, okay? mainly designed for pre-implementation. They're really meant for getting very deep analytics reports and sizing. Agent-based tools are really meant for static environments. I don't know how many of you have actually tried to deploy agents on a large scale. I have, and it's a headache. All right, they're really not meant for dynamic environments like VDI, where you're tearing up desktops and, and, and bringing them into service on a daily or weekly basis, all right? The other thing, particularly with agent-based tools, is it presents a security risk. Every piece of remote software that you put in a remote desktop, that's another potential backdoor for someone to come in and hack your infrastructure. Not good, okay? So agent-based tools really have their place. This is what we like to say, this is the fork here, all right? Use this to start eating VDI, prove, what you need for resource before you deploy. But agents aren't great for dynamic environments. Server metric tools, OK? Great for long-term resource management capacity planning, all right? Do a very nice job of looking at what you need for the future. They can also give you limited reporting as to what's happening for events. But they're telling you information that occurred maybe 15, 20 minutes and a half hour ago. Reason being is they're what you would call disk-based architecture, which means they have to pull, they have to actually wait for the statistics to aggregate on a remote disk, and then they have to pull that information back, correlate it, and then present to you. It's kind of like a newspaper reporter writing down notes, typing it up, then sending it to the actual press, and then they print it for you, and you pick up tomorrow morning's newspaper. All right? Very good for what we like to call resource management and forward implementation planning. And then you have what we call quality assurance, performance management. These are a unique set of new tools, of which Zingati is one of, that allows you to see things in real time. You get minute by minute, live up to the second granularity without the use of agents or probes. So the difference that we like to say is it's kind of the difference between having the fire department call you up and letting you know that your house burnt down or having the fire department pick up the phone and call you up and say, hey, I see smoke coming out of the kitchen. You have a problem. I think it's coming out of your cooker. Let's fix it. You want to be proactive, not reactive. So there's a bit of what we call sort of migration and evolution into VDI performance management. Not agent-based, not probe-based, not capacity planning-centric, but what we like to call real-time. Real-time performance management, here, now, live up to the minute with second-by-second -second granularity. So how do you know if you have any problems with your management tools? Well, let's, let's examine the different ways. All right, so number one, you feel more like the guy in the funeral home. <laughs> You're always trying to fix the problem after the desktop died or an issue happened. So this isn't a good place to be, right? Second point, OK, world peace has been achieved, but you're still trying to fix Hank's desktop in Amsterdam, OK? This has been going on for a week now. And he's really mad, and he wants his old computer back. He doesn't want a thin client anymore. He wants his computer back, because this isn't working. His latency is terrible. All right, you have to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning because you're a global bank and you got a guy in Bangkok who's got a storage problem and he keeps calling you up and he says, my latency is terrible. When are you going to fix this? I think you need to get in the next plane to Hong Kong and visit me. All right. You have more fingers being pointed at you than a Hollywood actress during the Oscar night. All right. Not a good place to be. Most of your nightmares, you can't sleep at night because you have 
a capacity planning issue. You really can't get a sense as to what the actual set of resources is that you, you require, okay? And you're also worried because your manager wants a budget from you, but you're not really sure what you need to make VDI work properly. Your seven-year-old daughter actually knows more about your PC over P problems than she does about mathematics, all right? Actually, this isn't too far from the truth. My kids laugh at me. I've been in high tech for 25 years, and I'm still a stupid old man in them, you know? But, you know, these kids are amazing. If I need tech support, I don't even call my engineer. I just call my kid in the university. He says, Dad, this is how you reboot the machine. But, you know, you want to be able to track end-to-end -end issues like PC over IP in, in real time. All right? <laughs> if you feel like this, you show up to work every day like you're a fireman, all right? That's not good. It means you're, you're being reactive. You're not being proactive. This is always bad. Now, how many guys have been stuck in the office late on a Friday night or weekend because everything's calmed down, and then what do you get to do? You get the log surf. You get to read the logs because you've got to try to figure out what the problem is. So instead of Saturday morning having a coffee with your honey and, and reading the, the, the newspaper, you're reading logs because you've been told by Monday morning in the staff meeting at 9 o'clock, I want to find out why that desktop was hung. How many times you feel like this, like, I can't find what the problem is? The problem is you end up being kind of like the horse's back end because you're in a meeting and you can't answer it. And last but not least, how many of you guys have ever gotten this one? You get that, that user that's really upset and they kind of lose it, and you're like, look, you know, we'll fix it. Just calm down. Not a good place to be. So how, how do I fix this? Um, there's a couple case studies that I want to bring today, and these are very complex end user environments. One is actually a customer case study with the US Army. Global deployment, 14,000 virtual desktops, a uh, combination of Zen desktop with VMware View. And when you talk about a mission critical application, this is one that literally is life and death. And you know, how many times you're in a management meeting, oh, this is critical, it's mission critical, you know, it's blah, blah, blah. This is truly life and death because the virtualization infrastructure that the U.S. Army deployed globally is for actual frontline triage. This is going to their frontline hospitals and mass units in places like Kandahar, Afghanistan, or Baghdad, Iraq, or God forbid, wherever there's a conflict. Okay, so if it doesn't work, it impedes the doctor's ability for the Army to actually help treat, analyze, and take care of people that are injured on the front line. So the project was called MedCom. We actually worked with Hewlett Packard on this. Hewlett Packard was the integration company. And when we sat down and we asked the people that ran the Army virtualization infrastructure, we like to ask questions. What do you want? What do you need? First one is we need to provide better end-to-end -end user experience, okay? Right now, the quality of the actual connection is not very good. We also need to stabilize our operating environment, particularly desktop operating systems and applications, all right? They actually were using a agent-based solution, was not very easy to implement, okay? And they were also very concerned about security issues. Um, they wanted to also enhance the efficiency, reducing log on times, okay? Being able to have a single sign on, get any application for things like medical records, x rays, just from one actual log on. Provide performance metrics across the multiple silos that I interoperate. So, their biggest problem was physical networking guy didn't understand how applications were affecting performance. Okay, that was a big issue. They could not see the physical network. And they also couldn't see what was going on with the IOPS or storage. So they had three different groups basically not working with each other to resolve the problem. The other thing, mobility. Ability to basically spin up a VDI desktop and tear it down automatically without having to deploy an agent. So, biggest issues they had, multiple silos, couldn't get a consolidated view. 
did not have the ability to have one report that could show everything, network, application, desktop, VMs, storage. Um, did not have the ability to actually drill down to a remote desktop. The information regarding latency was reported sometimes days after the, the fact. So, I mean, it's, it's, once again, it's like the analogy of the house burning down and you're too late to, to, to fix it. What they wanted was they wanted a live context, the ability to see things live on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. Most of their troubleshooting, it was based on log surfing. Once again, people spending days, weeks, months trying to analyze where the problem was. It got so bad where they actually had people coming in off hours unplugging VMs to try to troubleshoot, which is not very elegant. And as I said before, agents really didn't work in this environment because they were bringing up new desktops, taking them down on, a, on an hourly, sometimes daily basis. It was just too much labor involved with this. And the other issue was scalability, the ability to grow to tens of thousands of desktop users and manage all those. So what, did, what were we able to do? The process here is they actually had uh, their centralized medical systems at Fort Sam Houston uh, in Texas, and they wanted to be able to have an actual medical team be able to communicate with a remote site somewhere in the world. All right. So basically be able to have the ability to meet with a patient here uh, in Texas or in Washington, D.C. or whatever, and then also be able to correspond to someone halfway around the world. So <clears throat> basically the application was I get to see this patient, she leaves, now I actually have a request from a base somewhere around the world, they actually want to get a prescription on analysis for this patient who is maybe in Afghanistan. I now can actually have single sign and login. I can actually receive the file, and I am virtually now managing this patient somewhere halfway across the world. In order to do that, they need to be able to manage this process end to end to make sure there were no latency issues. So, what we were able to do is give them the management tools that enable them to be able to see everything in real time so they could accomplish this. So what we're able to do is we're able to give them an agent-free, scalable solution which allowed them to look at everything in a 360-degree view. So it didn't matter if it was actually virtual machine, mobile devices, application, storage, uh, and the actual uh, VMs themselves, they were able to get a live minute-to-minute -minute update view with recordings where they could actually record any of uh, events and alerts and alarms in real time and then play them back. And we do this all without the use of agents or probes. So, uh, local, local installation. Gemite uh, Zenstad, one of the largest municipalities here in the Netherlands, um, as you know, uh, a lot of the municipalities here are actually going to virtual desktop where you can walk in and I want to get my driver's license, my marriage certificate, be able to pick up a pension check, whatever. I can tell you what, I am envious. Your municipal centers here are fantastic. It's, it's a very pleasant experience as opposed to going to Motor Vehicle or Town Hall in San Jose, California. It's like the last place you want to go. In fact, if you really don't like someone, you ask them to go down to City Hall in San Jose, and it's like something out of a prison scene. You don't want to be there. You go here, I've, we've got a few customers like Hamite Dambash, uh, Zanstad, very pleasant. You go in there, I feel like I'm in a hotel lobby. You know, I'll sit down, have a tea, comfortable chair. I don't have some guy there picking his teeth with a gun like back in America. Very nice experience there. But, they had some major deployment issues here where they had multiple tools and they had finger pointing. Application guy was pointing at the network guy, network guy was pointing at the VM guy. And at the end of the day, the problem that they had was it got so bad, VMware themselves, and VMware has some very nice server metric tools, particularly VC Operations Center, but once again, different tools, meant for capacity planning, not made for root cause analysis. VMware actually brought Zingati in because the person there that was running this 
it was taking months for them to figure out what the latency problems were. In two weeks, we were able to figure out they had LDAP misconfigurations and they had bad blades in their HP kit, all right? And they were able to record it. They were able to prove it. They actually thought it was storage. Storage was great. Storage was working fine, okay? So what they were able to do is they got that 360 degree view where they were able to figure out if I had an application problem, this was how it was affecting my desktop. If it was a network problem, this is how it was affecting my desktop. Able to do it live, minute by minute, and record the information. Take the email, send it to the actual stakeholder that was causing the problem, mission accomplished. And the guy basically came up with this, and we use this in our advertising. And this is from John Wilhelm von Brumlin, the director there. He basically says, the difference between Zingati is you're like watching news live at 5 o'clock. You're showing me the incident as it's occurring versus picking up tomorrow morning's newspaper. And all the other tools I have was like looking at yesterday's news. So that's basically a couple local case studies. So a little bit about who we are. Been in business since 2007, very well funded. Actually, Citrix is now also a minority investor in us, so we support uh, uh, VMware uh, operating systems or Citrix. And um, worldwide, uh, we've got over 573 customers, and we've got some very nice installations here in, in the Netherlands as well. So uh, if you're interested in real-time live performance management without the use of agents, the ability to scale to tens of thousands of virtual desktops on one appliance without the use of additional hardware or probes. You can come by and um, you know, drop by our little stand and ask uh, uh, about how we can help you out. Uh, our in-country partner is represented by BGS. This is Rob Moy, who's our uh, local representative here. They, uh, they work with Zingati. And with that being said, are there any questions I can answer? I've got about five minutes. The playback. Yes. Does it perform differently on different hardware? No, it doesn't matter. Exactly. It's the same. So once again, the Zagati appliance, it's a virtual appliance that you basically run as an application under the, the hypervisor. So what you do is you provision the amount of disk CPU and memory, and the playback, you just basically click and point. doesn't matter. It's all software-based. Yeah. Yes, sir. We use an FPC farm without Citrix, just play an RDS and some stuff around it. Mm -hmm. Might be manageable with the Yeah, yeah. The, the issue with Citrix is if you have sort of what we call um, legacy Citrix, maybe you're running version 6, 6, 5, what have you, and it's things like RDS or published apps, okay, we can actually take a look at what's happening from point A to point B. We can't actually dive down. If you're actually going Citrix version 7 or higher and you're implementing AppFlow through Netscaler, then we can actually look inside the application and go complete end-to-end. -end. So based on what version of Citrix you have, the answer is yes. If you're 7 or higher, it's even better. And as you know, Citrix right now has a bit of a gap in their management because uh, Ed Sites being end of life now. So that's a major reason why they also made an investment in us. So yeah, we'd love to talk to you, see how we can help you. Anyone else? All right, I'd like to thank everyone for your time. Hopefully this was uh, informational as well as entertaining. And uh, best of luck to you all, all right? And come visit us. All right, thank you.